Well, we haven't done one of these ride-alongs in kind of a while, and uh, so uh, it's kind of nice to be able to put the phone up in the car again and, and do that. But, you know, um, I've had requests in the past, and I, I never really did it because I, I felt like it might be a little bit self-serving, but I had a conversation with a friend this morning that kind of reminded me of um, the importance of thinking back on our testimonies, how it is we came to know the Lord. And... Um, for a couple of reasons. It's good to be able to share them, obviously. You know, we like to be able to tell people our story of how we came to know Jesus and how he kind of drew us in, you know, as the ultimate fisher of men, right? And, um, but it's also good for us to think back on where we came from once in a while to just appreciate where we are, you know, and where we're going and that kind of thing. So I thought, you know, uh, at the risk of sounding a little self-indulgent, I, I don't want it to be that way, but I thought I would go ahead and just share a little bit of my own testimony. And um, at least, you know, maybe you guys get a little sense of where I'm coming from and, and that kind of thing. But also maybe it becomes an encouragement to you to share your own, you know, with your loved ones or your friends or people at work and that kind of thing when you have the opportunity. But um, I, uh, uh, I actually was brought up uh, in church, I grew up as a Catholic, my family going to church every Sunday and uh, was an altar boy, all that kind of thing. And uh, that was that was my background. That's what I I knew. And um, I was a pretty good church going kid and all that kind of thing. As a matter of fact, even when I was old enough to sort of decide whether or not to go, I still made it a habit of going. And so um, but during that same time, I also uh, as I was getting to be about 18, 19 years old, I uh, also came upon um, a group of friends who actually uh, really did know the Lord. I was working with one of the guys, the kid that I had known back in junior high school. Uh, his name was Eric, and he was somebody who was a pretty rough kid, actually. He and I weren't friends back at that time, but I knew him. And, you know, he was a musician. I was a musician. We played in various bands and all that kind of stuff. He had a pretty bad reputation. and um, uh, But now here I was working with him in this uh, tool and die shop. And, uh, and he was totally different than I recalled. Uh, he uh, still looked basically the same, but, um, but he was talking about Jesus nowadays. And so my first thought on that when I caught up with him and he was telling me about this stuff, my first thought, you know, as a good Catholic boy was, well, it's about time he got some religion. You know, I was thinking about what he used to be and I was never that, you know, and so good for you, buddy. And, um, but, but I did notice that when it, he talked about Jesus, it was very different than when I talked about Jesus. Uh, for starters, the fact that I really didn't talk about Jesus. But when when we would sort of talk about Jesus together, uh, he talked about him like he knew him, like personally, like they just had been hanging out or something. And uh, not in a, a disrespectful or, or, or particularly casual way, but he spoke about Jesus with a knowledge that I didn't have. And it was kind of weird to me. And so this went on for a while, and uh, uh, it turned out he was in a Christian band. He was actually in a Christian uh, metal band. And uh, another guy at the shop actually also was in that band with him. And so the two of them, you know, we would get together and talk. We'd have lunch. We, you know, they were always sharing the gospel with me and talking about Jesus, talking about the Bible. Um, now, and I had, I had had an interest in the Bible. I would read it periodically, not all the way through or anything, but I, I was not unfamiliar completely with the Bible. But... Um, but they were sharing scripture and they were talking about the Bible in a way that, would, again, was very different for me. And so they invited me out to church and it was a Calvary Chapel in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, and uh, where I used to live. And uh, so I went and started going out to church with them on Sunday mornings while I was going to mass on Saturday nights. And, um, and uh, when I sat there in the church, uh, I was impacted at first a little bit negatively, but eventually I came to sort of appreciate it much more but I was a little freaked out by the worship because, you know, I'm used to one thing in the Catholic Church, but they were singing much more kind of contemporary sounding songs and people were raising their hands in the seats. And plus they were meeting like at a community center, you know, so I, I didn't really, this whole world was new to me. And so, um, but, but after the worship, uh, this guy would come out and he would open the Bible and he'd say, okay, last week we're in this passage. We're going to continue right here this week. And pick it up where we left off and he would start teaching from that passage and I started to realize that they were they were teaching through the Bible which again was weird to me because in my mind the Bible was just sort of a book of stories and, and 
you know, and I was familiar with Noah and the Ark and Adam and Eve and Jesus, you know, healing people and those kinds of things. And, and of course, you know, growing up in the Catholic Church, you know, I knew about Jesus. Uh, a friend of mine recently, uh, uh, I think a friend of mine quoted R.C. Spore recently and, and mentioned that in talking about Catholicism, he said, well, they've got, they know what, who Jesus is, but they didn't, they don't necessarily understand what Jesus did. And that's exactly where I was. I mean, I knew who Jesus was, but it never really occurred to me the fullness of what Jesus had done on the cross and the resurrection. And so they were talking about these things. I think it was the Gospel of John at the time, but um, I think that's where he was teaching from. But he was teaching just straight through the Bible and just going verse by verse and explaining context and and, and helping to understand the cultural setting and, and cross Scripture with Scripture and all these different things. This was very, very... I had never done anything like that. None of that had ever occurred to me. And so I was really interested. I, I thought, this guy's teaching the Bible like it's a history book or something. And he's talking about these events like they they really happened. And and uh, and, and I was there for about a year listening to this every Sunday morning. Uh, much to my own discredit, it took me a year before I ultimately got saved. But I was listening to this for a year. And of course, my friends were sharing with me. And then a couple of things that happened along the way and uh, that, that really, in concert with hearing the Word of God, being around Christian friends as a non-believer, um, these things were working. Uh, God was working in my heart through these things. But then a couple of other events that really stuck out in, in, in my memory in regard to that time also took place uh, along the way. Um, there was a bar I used to go to in Elk Grove um, that uh, I frequented often. You know, I, I always like to say I don't want to I don't want to oversell it and make it sound like more than it was. I think in fairness, it's, it's, it's fair to say I was not an alcoholic, but I did drink a lot. I was definitely a, a pretty solid, strong social drinker. And so there was a bar I hung out at because I was always enamored with like cheers and that kind of thing. And so here I am in a neighborhood pub and hanging out with friends and all that kind of thing. Well, uh, a couple of people came in when they saw my car outside. One of them was a girl I had worked with who I knew at work before she was a believer and then all of a sudden one day she was a believer she was a christian and i could see there was already a change taking place in her life that was pretty noticeable and um and then she came in with a guy another guy they'd just been hanging out and they saw my car outside and so they came in which shocked me and embarrassed me to no end i mean they sat at the bar and they got a coke or a water or some kind of thing but they certainly didn't buy a drink like i was drinking and and they sat down and they just were talking to me I don't remember everything we talked about, but I know they weren't trying to convince me to leave the bar. They weren't getting on my case. None of those kinds of things. They were just talking to me and they, they did talk about the Lord, but they just came in to see how I was doing and, and just to talk to me. And, uh, and I was so embarrassed sitting there. I just, I it was red faced and I can still kind of feel that sense of what I felt like at the time. But I also remember being really impressed with that. I thought, well, that, I didn't know a lot about Jesus in retrospect now when I consider, you know, how much time has passed and just growing in the Lord. But at the time, I didn't know a lot about Jesus, but I I did know that that's the kind of thing Jesus would do. You know, like he went to sinners and stuff. Like they weren't waiting for me to necessarily, um, you know, this might have even happened before I started going to church now that I think about it, because I know they weren't waiting for me to come to church. They came to me. And that was, again, pretty impressive to me. Well, um, that was one of the events that really kind of struck me. Um, another thing was uh, the band I was in at the time. Um, I'll make it, this part of the story short, but we were we were practicing. There's a lot of weird irony in this. We were practicing in a church. We were not a Christian band, but one of the guys in the band told the pastor of the church we were a Christian band. And so he allowed us to practice there for free. Uh, and on top of that, we were playing with a lot of stolen gear. And, uh, um, and and we all knew it. And um, I mean, I, I actually had no part in stealing it, but I was using it. I mean, I was, you know, certainly didn't make me innocent in any means. But, um, but Eric, the guy I was working with, and another friend of mine, uh, Brian, who has really been my, at this point now, been one of my very best friends for, you know, 30 years. Um, he, uh, I didn't know him at the time, but Eric, I knew, they came in uh, to the place we were practicing, and they pulled aside one of the guys who was involved in stealing the gear, and uh, 
and they pulled him aside. They took him into a back room and they were talking for a little bit. We didn't know what they were talking about at the time. But after they all came out, Eric and Brian left. And this other guy in the band came out and said, you know, guys, we need to talk. Uh, Eric and Brian just told me that they were aware that we had stolen the gear and they couldn't really live with that on their conscience, knowing that and not doing something about it. Um, so they said, we can either return it or they're gonna have to report it. And a couple of the guys in the band were irate, angry, just ticked off. And, uh, and I remember being pretty unnerved by the whole thing, but I remember also being, frankly, pretty impressed. Um, you know, most people would have just let that go and thought, well, that's their problem or whatever, and, you know, I'll pray for you and all that kind of thing. But, but they actually stuck their necks out and, and, uh, and made it a point to kind of give an ultimatum about it. Like, they couldn't abide the fact that they were aware of this and weren't doing anything about it, and they felt guilty about that. And so uh, I was very impressed by that. I thought that was really, you know, kind of stepping out and, and standing for the right, the right thing. And so, um, so anyway, some some time goes by, and, and now I'm going to church with them on Sunday mornings, and I'm still not a Christian at this point. I'm, I'm I know about God, but I don't really know Christ. And so, right at that time, it turns out that a guy who was my best friend at the time, his name's Mark. I was unaware of this, but his mom had cancer. And right around that time, as all these things were going on in my life, um, word came to me that his mom had passed from cancer. Now again, I had no idea she had cancer. They were a little bit quiet in that regard, and um, but it turned out she passed away. And so Mark and I talked, and, and the setup is really uh, totally the Lord, but He's, Mark is looking at me, and Mark had no background in church, Christianity, religion, really. As far as I know, I don't think he had any background at all. Um, and uh, But here I am as a non-Christian. I'm a Catholic. I'm not saying a Catholic can't be a Christian, but I'm just saying I, I wasn't for sure. And, uh, um, and here I was going to church twice every weekend, sun, uh, Saturday nights and Sunday mornings. And... Um, and Mark sees this. He knows that I'm clearly religious, you know. And so he he and I are talking and he says, you know, you go to church, right? And something to that effect. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I believe in God and everything. And, and uh, he said, well, maybe when we've got some time, we can sit down and you can help me understand why God took my mom. Well, that was 30 years ago. I still don't really have an answer to that question. But at the time, of course, I'm saying yeah, well, you know, he's my friend, and yeah, let's sit down, let's get together and talk as soon as we can, you know, and we'll try and sort it out and everything, and I didn't know what I would say. Of course, I had no answer. I, I wouldn't even know how to approach that question, you know, and so we didn't get together right then, but about a week went by, and um, and again, all this other stuff's going on in my life. I've got Christians sharing the gospel with me. I've got, you know, um, these things that God is doing, working in my life, and then this thing with Mark's mom passes, uh, comes by, and and, um, and so as, uh, as that week goes by, you know, it, it comes to mind, I'm thinking about it. I'm, you know, I'm feeling bad for him. I, I, I wouldn't say I'm praying for him because I, I don't really know, you know, but, but, uh, during that period of time, again, just to mention, I was, I was a drinker. As a matter of fact, just to kind of, I promise you, I'm not relishing this because I'm, I'm very thankful I'm no longer in that place, but uh, in my apartment, where I was living with a couple of friends at the time, we had a, a bar in our apartment. I mean, that's, when I say we were good, strong social drinkers, that's what I mean. We were, we were into it. And so, um, so that weekend, it was either Friday or Saturday night, I forget, but we um, had one of our typical kind of Friday night, Saturday night hangout things. People were coming over, drinking, and a lot of people over over the course of the, the time. And so, you know, like any other weekend, the next morning, you know, a lot of us were hung over and there were people sleeping on the floor and on the couch and everything. And, and I remember getting up that morning and uh, walking out to the fridge to look for, you know, something to eat, some orange juice or something. And, and uh, as I'm in the fridge and I'm, and I'm thinking about Mark and the fact that we're going to be getting together to talk about, you know, why God took his mom. This, this just really stuck in me. I was trying to figure this out a little bit, but I really didn't have anything to say. Um, and I remember in the morning, uh, here I was looking for some food, something to drink, just to kind of work off my hangover. 
and uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm not one of these people, by the way, that, that says, you know, I hear God's voice all the time or anything. Um, I believe we hear God's voice in his word. I believe that he works in our circumstances. I believe he can plant thoughts in our minds and sort of impress things on our hearts and that kind of thing. I believe all that. But, you know, and I'm not saying I heard an audible voice in this moment, but very clearly the Lord had put it into my heart and in my mind. The reason you don't have an answer for your friend is because you don't know me yourself. Now that could have been the result of all of the sharing of the gospel with me and just seeing my friends as believers and what it meant to really know the Lord. But I say that because all of those things, all of those circumstances and relationships and everything, the time that had gone by and the events that had taken place, these things were all part of God ultimately bringing me in. And that, mor that morning, uh, he completely nailed me. Uh, for all of the thinking that I knew God and I was religious and I was a pretty good person and when I died I'd probably go to heaven because I'm you know I'm not an axe murderer you know all those typical things we think is we're you know as as uh, as non-believers justifying our lives and why we're okay with God and everything that was true of me but that morning the Lord kind of cut through all that and um, that kind of he he like took a machete and just cut right through it and left me standing there basically exposed to him. And I knew it. The difference was that even though that had likely happened in some form or another over the course of my life, um, this was the moment that I finally stopped resisting that. And uh, went back to my room. <laughs> my friends uh, who were believers and in a Christian band who I was hanging around with quite a bit, uh, they, you know, I knew how to get saved in the moment. You know, I knew how to pray and, you know, ask the Lord into my heart and all that kind of stuff because they had, you know, they had basically prayed it into half the times we'd gone out to lunch when they were praying for the food. They worked the gospel into it half the time. And so I, you know, um, I knew the gospel at this point. I knew that, you know, I now I, I didn't just know who Jesus was. I knew what Jesus did. And and this was the moment now that it finally, he was finally the, where I put my faith. I trusted him. And I went back to my room and I was by myself at that point. Everybody was still crashed out. But I went ahead and just confessed. I'm like, Lord, I, you know, I, I don't remember. I wish I, I really wish I remember the words I had said. But I just know that in that moment, the running was over. And so I became his that day. Um, and the Lord began to work in my life. Uh, he became my Lord. He became the Savior of my life. He became the, the Redeemer and the the. The, the setting apart of my life and soul and everything. And so I um, began to, of course, the, the good news was in that moment, I had uh, a lot of Christian friends that immediately received me in and, and, and celebrated. And, and, and most importantly, they discipled me. Uh, one of the guys uh, had uh, taken me through uh, some of the Navigator stuff. Some of you are familiar with the Navigator books and the discipleship program. And so I began to learn the Word, I began to read the Word. The strong encouragement to be in the Word of God all the time was um, among my peers, people my age who were very serious and remain to this day very serious about the, the Word of God, uh, began to instill in me the importance of spending time every day studying God's Word and praying and being in fellowship and, and really the four legs of the stool, fellowship and prayers and breaking bread and the, the teaching that you see in Acts 2. I already was thankfully by God's design, I was part of a good church already went on to serve in that church for about 15 years before we finally made the move down to Tennessee when God called us to come down here for the work he's doing here now. Um, but I, I, I'm the product of, of people who love me, who love the Lord, who are strong students of the word, who understood grace. Um, you know, there's a gratitude in my heart that I could never possibly express, much less repay uh, all of those that the Lord used. But that's my story. That's how I came to know the Lord. And, and you know, um, I'm very, very thankful to say that those same guys, those same uh, four guys who helped me come to know Jesus are all still walking with the Lord. One of them pastors a church in Illinois. The others are walking with the Lord and raising their families in Christ and making a difference. And it's just, uh, and I'm still in contact, especially with two of them, but you know, uh, well, actually three of them somewhat. Uh, and a little bit even with the fourth, but you know, two of them I talk to all the time, and uh, they remain uh, really close. And so, um, anyway, that's my story, that's my testimony. And you have a story that is yours as well, the path that God 
led you on that led to the cross, that led to the brokenness, that led to the recognition of your sin and your need to be saved. Um, think about your story from time to time. Think about what it is that God did in your life to bring you to where you are. And rejoice in that, celebrate that, remember that. Think about where you came from and allow that and that knowledge of the grace that God demonstrated in saving you from your sin, washing you clean, making you a new creation in Christ. Let the grace that is involved in that permeate your own telling of your story, the way that you live for Jesus, because this is the kind of thing that can make a difference in someone else's life as you share your story. This is the flesh and blood of what the gospel does to people and how it saves them and redeems them and changes them from the inside out, a full divine 20 point makeover. This is the good news. So anyway, there it is. That's that's my story. And um, I'm glad to share it with you all. And uh, and I hope you'll do the same. I hope you'll share yours, you know, whether it's even in the comments section or but most importantly with those around you that need to know Jesus. Uh, might be that there are some here watching the video right now or listening to it uh, that don't know Jesus but are hearing this. And you're thinking about maybe now that you've heard someone else tell how they got there, you're thinking about what God's been doing in your life to bring you to the point where maybe now you're, you're ready to come and receive that which Christ has accomplished for you. The gospel is simply this, that Jesus became a person like you and I. The eternal word, as he's referred to in scripture, God from eternity past, took on a body of flesh and walked among us, and he taught great things, clearly. He did miracles, amazingly. But the biggest reason why he came was ultimately to pay a debt that we owed, uh, a debt against him, against God. And since we had no capacity to pay it, and it's important that we recognize that we don't, we generally like to think that we do, but we don't. We don't actually have any ability to pay that debt. And knowing this, he came and paid it for us. Jesus died on the cross, shedding his own blood to pay our debt. And he rose from the dead and he ever lives to make intercession for us. He stands there and calls to us. He sends people into our lives who represent him, who speak on his behalf and who uh, live a life that ultimately reflect him and his personality, his character, his nature, his glory, and share the story of what he accomplished for us so that we can hear those words and ultimately respond to them. The gospel is good news. And so, if you're in a place now where you realize that you need him, you've always needed him, but maybe now you realize it. It's interesting, Jesus came to the Pharisees and said he didn't come for those who are well, but for those who are sick. The Pharisees didn't realize they were sick, but they needed him just as much as you and I. So maybe now you're at that point where you come to realize it. Let me invite you to pray. Don't wait another day. Don't put it off. There's a point at which our hearts become very, very hardened and cold to the gospel. But the truth of the matter is, is that Jesus is calling you today. He's inviting you to come and respond even right now. So let me give you an opportunity to do that. I'm obviously not going to close my eyes as I'm praying because I'm driving and that can be a disaster. I do drive by sight, not by faith. But um, anyway, let me go ahead and pray and invite you to come and put your trust in Jesus receiving that benefit of all that he accomplished when he died on the cross for your sins and mine, that you might become a believer, a Christian, a follower of Jesus even today. So pray with me if you would. Heavenly Father, I confess to you that I am a sinner. I've broken your law. I have kept you at arm's length. I've resisted you. I have lived my life apart from you. But today I realize that I need you that I have no hope apart from you, that when I die, I'm not going to heaven because I've never put my trust in what Jesus accomplished to make that possible. I've rejected him, but today I receive him. Today I put my trust in Jesus who died for my sins and who rose from the dead. And I pray that you would help me to walk with him now until I see you face to face. Thank you for loving me and saving me. Thank you that Jesus died for my sins once and for all, past, present, and future. And thank you for the grace that comes to me now because of this. I love you and praise you. And I pray you'd help me learn how to follow Jesus.
Thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. It is interesting that in the Bible, you don't see a lot of what we typically call sinner's prayers, like what we just prayed just now. And that's because the important thing is not that you sort of just say these special words. There's nothing magical, actually, about those words that I just said. It's just that it's possible that not being a believer, you never really thought about how to ask Jesus into your heart, how to receive that gift of salvation that comes through his finished work on the cross. And so we say those prayers to just sort of help us say, uh, to ask for this, to receive it and such. But the important thing is that you believe. In Acts chapter 10, there's a Gentile named Cornelius and his family, he's a Roman centurion, uh, who sends for Peter to come to his house and ultimately tell him the good news. And as Peter is talking, he never even gets to sort of the sinner's prayer part. He just is talking about what Jesus has accomplished. And in the midst of him talking about it, Cornelius and his family believe and they come to faith, they're saved. And so the important thing is not just the special prayer that I just said, the important thing is that you actually have now put your trust in Jesus. You believe that he died for your sins and that he is, as he said, the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him. But all who do come to the Father through him are saved. And so praise the Lord for that. We're so thankful to hear, I'd love to hear, I should say, so thankful to think that some of you might have prayed that prayer and might have most importantly put your trust in Jesus. This is now part of your story. This is part of how you came. The rest of the story is all that God has done to bring you here. And so learn to love him, learn to worship him. And we do that by going to church with believers, bringing our Bibles and opening them and going to a church that teaches the Bible so that we can hear what God has to say. Growing in our faith alongside of other believers who want to grow with theirs, being part of a community where we can give and receive with each other and help each other as we walk with the Lord. One day Jesus will come and bring us home. And until that day, it's important that we grow to know him better and better. I like to say he becomes less and less a stranger the day we meet him. And we spend all this time getting to know him now. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, if you did if you did come to Christ today, let me know that. Oh, boy, I would love to know that. You know, the, the angels are rejoicing in heaven over uh, a lost sinner who comes to repentance. That's a beautiful thing to think about. Um, but those of us on earth who hear about you coming to Christ also rejoice too. So I'd love to hear about that and, uh, and such. But in any case, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, I just pray that, uh, that the Lord would bless and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you and give you peace forever. So God bless you and we'll catch up with you next time.